drop in. We're doing a world tour. Hey, my name's Shohi, and welcome to the Minecraft world building series, where we're building a fantasy world with lore. I started this channel almost four months ago, and we finally hit the 500 day mark in our survival world. This is absolutely the longest time I've actually spent on a single player world, so it's been a pretty impressive feat for me, and I wanted to showcase the builds as well as consolidate a lot of the lore we've built into one video. We're calling it a world tour and lore, and we'll try to make a video like this every 500 days or so. Over the years, I've mostly played on SMPs and creative, and as I was slowly getting burnt out, I was getting inspired to create and document my own long-term world after watching the survival worlds of FWIP and Mog Swamp, and also the creative world of Shovel241. This series is kind of a love child between two passions of mine, which is world building and video games. And the goal of the series is to build an interconnected world filled with civilizations with rich histories and lore, and also to just have a really cool world to call mine. Look at that. Look at that chicken. I also wanted to step out of uh, my comfort zone and to be able to explore a variety of different building styles, so naturally I think a fantasy world will help me do just that. If you like world building and lore, or just enjoy the builds, or this chicken, consider leaving a like and subscribing. It really helps out a small channel like mine. So let's get on to the tour. So to start off, we're in a creative copy of a world and this is the general map. We're playing on large biomes to help make the biomes feel a little more expansive and realistic. I always thought it was kind of weird being able to walk into a new biome after like two minutes, but this way we can build kingdoms in one biome instead of it overlapping multiple biomes, which can ultimately affect the water and grass color. The bad thing about large biomes is traveling can be quite annoying, but eventually I want to build road structures connecting all the different areas. All the various waypoints are just potential city areas. Right now we're working in this area, but eventually I do plan on traveling throughout the entire map and kind of adding cities in each little spot here. So far in the series, we've been focused on our starter city located in the Sylvan Frontier, also known as the homeland of the Entios or the Fairies. For this region, we're following a fairy core style of building, focused a lot on a lot of natural objects and repurposing trash or litter left behind by other races. It's honestly a very, very unique style that I've been having a lot of fun coming up with build ideas for. And hey, if you have any build suggestions, leave a comment down below. So we're back in our survival world and welcome to the fairy city of Mosswood. This is our fairy starter city located deep within the wilderness of the Sylvan Frontier. So this is our starter base, a little humble abode built into an acorn. Uh, it's a little bit overgrown at the moment, but it's pretty cute, I would say. But we started this world. Uh, it's one of the very basic builds, and it's very easy to come up with all of this material. So it was a perfect starter base idea, but we got a little farm right here. And then we've got the actual acorn. So you've got the little head of the acorn, the body of the acorn. And then this is supposed to be kind of the stem of the acorn. And then I've kind of got some things scattered around here that I need to clean up, but we'll do that later. And then we've got this little arcway here, archway, to kind of go in there. Check it, take a look at the interiors here. Very, very simple interiors, but very basic setup right there. We got a little fireplace. You always need a fireplace and a little desk. And then we would put our um, second set of iron armor right there. We never really got to that though, because I didn't really have that much iron. There's the back side. Got a back door. Pretty cute. So for some background and lore, the Entios or fairies are small humanoids with insectile-like features. Like insects, they come in all different sizes, ranging anywhere between 1 to 6 inches tall, and are oftentimes mistaken for bugs which is where they get their name. Ent comes from the Greek word entmo, meaning insect, and eos is uh, just something I thought sounded cool. So combine them together and you get the name entios. So the entios mimic the looks of other insects to help them camouflage with their natural surroundings. So you'll have some fairies look like ladybugs, some like moth people, some even look like really, really large mosquitoes. Horrifying, I know. If you've ever watched One Piece, they're kind of like the Tantata with Devil Fruits, or if you like D&D, kind of like the various insectoid races like the Arachnids. 
The Entios are one of the five vitalized races, meaning that they possess the affinity to one of the five elements. The five element system comes from the Chinese philosophy called Wuxing and are earth, fire, water, metal, and wood. I know, very, very similar to Avatar The Last Airbender, but it's a little different because we're following a different belief system. So the Entios are gifted with the affinity to wood, which is also called Arboromancy, and it's more so plant affinity than it is just wood manipulation. So instead of just being able to control wood, they can also control plants. So things like flowers, mushrooms, all the like. I think that fits kind of perfectly for little fairies. So they'll kind of be flying through the forest, kind of, you know, pollinating everything, making everything grow. Moving on, this is our fairy mine here. We're going to hop into free cam for a moment. The main building is built out of a hollowed boulder or stone with some moss and grass and stuff growing right on the top of it. And then the main building also uses a teacup as a water tower to supply water for whatever mining operations they may need down below. And we've also got this mining crane here built out of a discarded fishing pole and a pot. I'm not sure if it really looks like a pot, but it's what I could do with a diagonal. But here's the fishing rod. It's supposed to look like the Minecraft fishing rod. So it's a very basic stick with a little spinning mechanism right here. And then down the chain, we've got the actual red bob there that is used as a platform for moving the mined goods up and down. So this free mine here is actually an amethyst mine. We've got a geode down below along with our skeleton farm. And it's a blend of using natural objects as well as upcycling trash left behind by other races. Although fairies don't often trade and are mostly isolated, they do occasionally trade amethyst for different wares, particularly to the elves. The amethyst crystals here are highly sought after by elven merchants for its sun absorbent properties, but uh, we've yet to see any actual elves in the series, so that's for way down the line. Since fairies are so tiny and nimble, they're perfect candidates for extracting the precious crystals without breaking them. But here we use the mine as our main stone storage place. I ran out of torches, so I kind of just threw a flame back there. But um, we kind of store all of our stone types and we've got, you know, a bunch of amethyst for trade there. And the interior is very, very basic. I just threw down a bed so that I can run here and sleep sometimes. But the interior is very basic. I, you'll notice most of my interiors are pretty bare bones at the moment because I'm still pretty early game. I've really just got some diamond armor and it's barely enchanted. But we've got a little workstation table here for people to come sit here, chat and eat. And a little stone cutter and a little cozy fireplace to warm up during the winter. Got our first pickaxe right there. It's a wooden one and our first diamond. It's a pretty cozy place. I got a little side shack over here with a little barrel holding things. And then, you know, a little campfire area where people can sit, roast some marshmallows. And we head down towards the mine, more little storage space, little minecart track. We've got Rob here who, uh, you know, try to rob us. And he's not very happy with his current situation, but, you know, that's where he ends up. But going down the mine, it's kind of all over the place. I threw random little bits of amethyst. It's really, really not looking too great there, but uh, I haven't really blended the environment with the amethyst. So I just got silk touch pretty recently. So, but here we've got the actual mines. Go down the hall, some amethyst there, some clusters sporadically spread out. Um, but you go down and then we've hit our little skeleton farm right here. It's nothing to look at. It's just a skeleton farm. Very basic, but there you see it in case you wanted to. I'm going to break episode order here and visit the library or lore berry. So it's in the shape of a strawberry. Get it though? Like a library, but, uh, Library? No? Just me? Alright. 
<laughs> but anyways, this is the library or the lore berry where we store our lore book for this region. So we've got our lore book. We basically write a bit of lore for every episode and we kind of talk about it in each episode. But this is the interior. It's a pretty cozy little build here. Got our enchanting set up here. And we like to use a lot of glow berries for lighting. And then bam. Upstairs got a little bookshelf area. I think I ran out of books or bookshelves. And I still have to fill it out a little bit. But I'll come back to that. And then we've got a wandering trader who in my mind is the wandering traveler that is writing all these little lore books here. And we've just kind of stolen one from him or, you know, maybe he met his demise in the Sylvan Frontier. But the reason we're here in the Loreberry is to talk about lore. The Entios have two unique building styles. The first involves organic and natural structures you can find in the wilderness like acorns and boulders. Hollowing refers to the process of creating an empty space inside of a structure or repurposing it to fit a fairy's need. Which in our case, our starter home and our amethyst mine are clear examples of hollowing. Barkification or embarkment allows an arbormancer to encase themselves in a protective exterior layer of petrified organic matter like bark. The technique can be applied to a fairy architecture as well by petrifying a plant's cell wall to create a sturdier material. So our library, for example, is a strawberry, which naturally is a little mushy, but with barkification, the strawberry cell walls are strengthened and we've got a sturdy strawberry home. The second building style involves reusing discarded objects left behind by other races. Things we found at the Amethyst Mine, like fishing rods, teacups, and pots are repurposed into fairy architecture. The Sylvan Frontier is a wild place and mostly avoided, but occasionally you'll have adventurers venture through the Sylvan Frontier in hopes to find riches or to even capture fairies to sell in the black market. And where there are tourists, there's also litter. But where there's adventurers, there's also death. And the Entios are more than happy to use what they can get off of a body. So you might think fairies, wow, whimsical, but not all of them. A fairy is more than happy to take what they can get and repurpose it into a home. So for our poor adventurers that don't make it out of the Sylvan Frontier, you may find their boots are repurposed as little fairy homes. In this case, we've got our boot barn boot farm, our boot farmhouse, where we've got our animals stored. These animals themselves, in lore wise, would not be cows and sheep because they're quite big. But for a fairy rancher, these would more so be insects. So instead of wrangling cows and sheep, a fairy rancher would be wrangling bugs. We've got our horse here as well. We This is Savannah. Everybody say hi to Savannah. But a fairy rancher would wrangle bugs more than they would cows and sheep because they, quite frankly, are not the size to be wrangling such things. So imagine like a Minecraft spider in here. That's about, you know, and they're not massive for the player character. But they would maybe do, um, they maybe ranch silkworms, spiders for their silk. Or, you know, maybe they'll milk ladybugs. That, that sounds weird, but, you know, maybe that's a thing. But here we've got the boot barn, boot farmhouse. And I think it's very cozy. These All these builds are pretty beginner friendly. All the materials are pretty easy to get. Aside for, I mean, no, glass is pretty easy to get to. But the interior, again, very barren, but we've got a cozy little fireplace here. And we've got a little farm table where they are eating green dye, apparently. <laughs> a little weird, but we got a little kitchen spot right here and a little bit of storage space. Again, I would love to do a little more interior decorating, but you know, I don't know. I'll have to come by and do all that stuff. I do need to get a bunch more interior decoration stuff. But here we go. We've got a little sleeping cot area and another spot right there. Oh, and we also have a rainbow mosaic for the shoelaces there. 
up here nothing much just some dirt but our little shoelace here is made out of diorite and along the same vein we've got our pristine little teacup and teapot here this is our nether tea portal room uh teapot tea portal you know you, you get the idea this took a ton of time because i had to collect a ton of quartz especially early game with no fortune very very tedious but here we've got another item found off of a traveler this one would have been found maybe in you know a elegant goblins pack so an idea that someone commented was that a lot of these some of these items here are from different races hence the difference in size so this is like a tree stump that we'll come talk about later but this teacup or this teapot would be pretty big compared to that tree stump but maybe if it's a goblins uh, a goblins teapot then it'd be much smaller because goblins are much smaller than humans so i think we're going to stick with that idea but that teacup right there is a little different from this teacup and you know some fairies will come here enjoy a little hot tub right there but I think it's pretty funny that this white, pristine, and pink teapot here uh, houses our nether portal at the moment. It's kind of our nether portal room. It's, you know, lacking. But something, you know, the teapot is, you know, supposed to hold hot things. And the nether is quite hot. So, kind of makes sense there. Little fireplace. Not very decorated, but it's just because I just entered the nether. And the nether, I have nothing built, so there's really no reason to look in there. But anyways, I made all of these builds a little overgrown to kind of help sell the idea that they're, uh, you know, overtaken by fairies. And huh, I've got uh, a lot of overgrowth there. I need to clip these vines if they could be clipped, but I don't believe they can. So we're going all out of order now, but that's okay. This is our newest build here. This is a greenhouse made out of a discarded bottle that we found in our fairy village that we'll be looking at after we kind of explore this area right here. But this is a bottle that we found floating in the water. It's got a little logo here. It says can, cad, something like that, car, I don't know. Eventually, I want to tie this in with some lore here, but this bottle says, what, like, car, can, had, one of those things. But in another region, I want to build a bottle factory to kind of say that their drink ended up in the river and polluting our beautiful little Sylvan Wild here. This is more so kind of a wine bottle because it's got a cork here. Or, you know, maybe it's just an old bottle. But here is the greenhouse. We've got a little washing station and secateurs to cut the plants and a little hoe. Very overgrown per usual. And here we also store a bunch of our flowers. Um, I'm storing a bunch of other things here at the meantime just because I'm very unorganized. But here you can see, store a bunch of flowers and whatnot. Got a little tree here. But basically, fairies are arbormancers. They practice wood magic, so they're, uh, I've got a lot of different names, but they're wood vitalizers. Kind of like, you know, Avatar The Last Airbender, but they're vitalized with an element, so they're vitalizers. Wow, what a concept. But yeah, here's the exterior. I added this little bracing on the bottle to kind of mimic those, um, like bottle holders, and also to prevent it from kind of rolling away. Because a bottle just laying there, if there was strong gusts of wind, it would definitely start tumbling. Start rolling down this hill right here. But, you know, the Entios would use their Arbormancy and create these little bracings over here to prevent it from doing that. And then in the city as well, we've got this. This is a tree stump. Let's see it from up above because it's much easier to see that it's a tree stump from the top but there you go we've got like little wooden ring the tree rings on the top here little skylight for them 
same thing over there but this is the tree stump it's infested by a lot of mushrooms we've you we're using these they're conch style mushrooms that kind of represent these windows they're kind of like bay windows but repurposed you know from a mushroom but we've got a few of these conch style mushrooms and then the you know little roots are kind of going all over the place i really i really love the organic side of this thing and then we've got a bunch of red caps and blue caps here as well but this build is the fairy city hall or the fairy city council where all the elders sit and kind of you know chat and discuss their fairy plans we've got this round table here that uh, represents a round table Yo, wow what a concept but this is also our wood storage space so we've got all of our wood kind of just hiding around those are like the special types of wood and then these are the basic type of woods and then the nether woods are hiding in the corner the entios follow a clanism societal structure throughout the sylvan frontier you'll find hundreds of entios clans all specializing in different ways of life most clans stick to themselves and form their own small villages but on rare occasions we can find a fairy city like mosswood which is a collective of various clans who have strong bonds or alliances mosswood is a collision of eight fairy clans which have no names but feel free to comment some ideas down below. The round table hence has eight chairs for eight clan leaders. The round table embellishes the image of the colossal serpent, one of the five celestial beasts. In their downfall, the five celestial beasts each chose one mortal race to bestow upon their elemental magic. Like a sinuous vine, the colossal serpent sprouted forests wherever she went. The most ancient of forests, now called the Sylvan Frontier, was her final resting place, and her body became the mountains and the rivers. During her lifetime, the Entios served as caretakers for the serpent, earning them the name Protectors of the Forest, and thus her favor and her powers to the affinity of wood. Due to this, snakes are revered symbols for the Entios, and seeing a snake is a sign of good luck and fortune. So the Colossal Serpent is quite an important symbol for the fairies. So they've, you know, kind of got this little snake around here. Kind of looks like an S, but you know, it's the best we can do with this scale. Also, don't mind all the lighting because, you know, I just, uh, I need to upgrade that and hide all my lighting. But we've got this little winding path upwards towards the top, which has absolutely nothing. Just a good view and some good vibes. So this is one of the higher points of the city, aside from the boot, where you can kind of take a surround, uh, what is that, a panorama. You can take a panoramic look at the city here. But next up, this build connects with this build right here. So let's take a look. So this is the Sleepy Hollow Inn, which is, as you guessed, I in get it because like a sleepy hollow you know the sleepy hollow but it's a sleepy hollow inn because it's an inn made out of a hollowed log take a look at it per usual with free cam there you go there's one side there's the top and there's another side we've got these similar little rocks and boulders for them to build out of in hollow and this Got the same style of windows with the conch mushrooms. And then we've also got these mushroom shelf mushrooms here. This one's supposed to be chicken of the woods, which apparently tastes like chicken. And yeah, just add a little bit of color and some splashes. And then we've got these little flowers right here, which are supposed to be what we call wood anemone. You can find them on the forest floor but they're pretty basic a little shroom light and this one this one has a honeycomb because i ran out and then okay then i added these little ladders here because you can kind of parkour to the different flower tops little fun tidbit there time to sleep but we also added this little tree ring so you if you notice there's like spruce that goes in a ring and then there's another layer of oak that goes around uh, it might be hard to see with all the little leaves that we threw around. But the Sleepy Hollow Inn isn't just a simple inn. It's also our moss farm. So we go inside. Bam. 
Here's our moss farm. A very loud moss farm, which will change with the piston changes. But it's a very simple farm. I've stacked to the brim with moss here. But here is our Sleepy Hollow Inn interior. So we've got little, little sitting spaces for the patrons to eat at. Little small tables, some standing bar tables as well. And got a little bit of painting in here. This one has a little more decorations in the inside because I did get a little more decorative items when I built this. Then we've got a little fireplace. And this is where the bartender stands. I don't really look like a fairy since my skin is that of the Monkey King, if you can tell. But uh, yeah, so if you want to order your drink, you order from the fairy bartender who also knows how to cook up some things. But the kitchen is built out of this little stone right here off to the side. And then going up, we've got some sleeping area. The flooring here actually follows the tree rings. So you notice this is a spruce and that's oak. Aha, very clever. Little sitting space there. And then uh, the rooms are tiny, absolutely tiny, but don't mind that. A little, just uh, just enough for you know sleeping and a little bit of writing in the nighttime. Same here. Uh, this one I took away the bed. I probably needed it in a pinch, so I took it. But we'll replace it eventually. But yeah, where there's a fallen log, you have to have a tree stump. So I kind of added that little piece right there to connect them. And instead of it, you know, kind of decaying, the fairies, since they're arboromancers and practice wood magic, they can kind of maintain the integrity of the, the wood without it degrading. And then here we have another farm. Here is our honeybee hobbit hole. It's maybe not a hobbit hole because this would be a very, very tiny hobbit hole. This would be more so a burrow that's been transformed by some fairies into a little bee home. This is the most constructed build that maybe a fairy would do. Um, it's honestly just kind of a cute thing that I wanted to add into the world. But here we've got all this honeycomb here to kind of mimic it looking like a little beehive. But let's go inside and we've got our bee farm in here. There you go. Cute little bee. Look at that. I like looking at the bee butts. But we got a bunch of honeycomb here. Dismal amount of honey because we don't have bottles at the moment. But the interior is also pretty basic in here as well. Got some like a living room space right here near the fireplace. And a little kitchenette with some dining space and then I really like these little little like circular separations but very hobbit style got a little stairway coming up the upstairs is very very barren almost as if they just moved out but here you've got like a bee rancher so a little fairy taking care of a bunch of bees I in my lore I kind of talked about some crazy bee lady, kind of like a crazy cat lady who's got thousands or hundreds of bees in their home, just petting all the bees. And everyone's like, look at that crazy bee lady. And she'll kind of look out this window and watch the kids parkour on these little flowers here. But yeah, um, I do want to come up here and decorate it eventually because there's really no me reason for me to come up here. I did think about potentially adding a honey farm like the honey bottle farm up here instead since it's it's probably got enough space to do that but we never know but here we've got maintenance for our honey farm right there so i do believe that is all of the builds in the actual fairy city of mosswood at the moment but we did build a fairy village along the way so let's head towards lotus village uh, and here is Lotus Village. I, I'm supposed to have a boat here, but looks like I left it over there. But here we have Lotus Village. This is probably one of my favorite builds on the world so far. But this is Lotus Village. It, ha It's a fairy village that's made out of lotus flowers. 
Um, this area houses the Pescari clan, which is fish in Italian. Um, very, very unique, I know, but that's what we got. But this is where we spend our time fishing. So we've got our fishing rod and we kind of just throw out our cast and fish. Let's see what we get. I, I tried mending. There was a whole craze when Green was kind of fishing for books. And just a bone. Not bad, not bad. But so this houses the Piscari clan, which is uh, just a little quaint fishing fairy clan. Nothing too crazy. But I really do love these builds. This is a floating fairy village inspired by some floating fishing village you can find in Asia. It's also inspired by these giant lily pad parks that you can find also in Asia. And basically the lily pads are strong enough in some cases to support a human, you know, kind of standing on top of it. So I thought it'd be cool to make a lily pad village out here with some lotus flowers. But all the lotus village houses are slightly different in their petal formation. So this one looks like this. You've got some variation between each one, which I, I really like. I really do. But going in the interior, because it's getting dark, we've got our resident bee villager, our fairy bee. Let's just act like he's kind of running this place a little bit. I died a ton while I was building this, because there was a drowned with a trident and I was very early game so it killed me quite a lot as I was running through here but I think it's pretty pretty dang cute we've got these little pathways with these lily pads to kind of trek between the different lily pads but here we've got a little fish smoking area so the Pescari clan here would you know you think about fish and they're quite large but the Piscari clan are, you know, fishing more so tiny, tiny fish or tadpoles. But yeah. And then we added these little mossy bits on the top of the water to mimic algae. Kind of like an algae bloom on top of the river. I think it adds a quite a nice touch to the build. But like I said, all of these lotus houses are a little different in shape. This one's empty, but you can just put a bed here. You make it pretty cozy in here but look at that we've got these birch fences and these candles to come and kind of mimic where they where bees might get their nectar and then here we've got the main building this is where the clan leader of the pescari clan would reside lotus village and this is also where they would come with their boats. So this boat right here is a very crude vessel. It's supposed to just be like a piece of strip bark that you kind of fell off a tree. And then they put a stick on and slapped on a large leaf on here as the sail. So sometimes we'll have some Piscari clan members hop onto the boat and head out there and do some fishing. And they'll put maybe a little bit of salt in there to salt the fish. But if you look from the top side, there's a little cool detail here. We've got these, this little algae bloom here. And the boat maybe was coming through here and slip through the algae, splitting it. That's kind of what I was aiming for. It kind of adds a little bit of motion to the world. Although the boat's already parked, so I don't know how much that kind of exhibits. And then here we've got a little budding lotus flower where once the flower blooms, it can be repurposed and uh, restructured into a home, kind of how the village expands itself. But yeah, I'm trying to mimic like vanilla villages by only having a few structures. So the way I do this world is I you'll have um homesteads where it'll just be one building then you'll have villages which is maybe like two to five buildings and then we'll have towns which are maybe you know six to ten buildings and then cities will be ten and up something like that that's how i like to world build at least in minecraft 
obviously if you were in a real village there'd be a lot more buildings and if you're in real city there'd be hundreds of buildings but in minecraft we kind of have to you know stifle our expectations and only build a few structures because it's just not realistic to build hundreds and thousands of buildings for a city so and here's a pier pretty cool pretty cool honestly this this lotus here is a lot cooler there's multiple petals all facing different directions this one's facing downwards this one's facing upwards downwards again and you can kind of add this little curvature by doing signs here instead it's very very minor detail but it does wonders and then here you go again a little drooping petal here I, I really i really loved how this build turned out top wise it looks very square so just don't look at it from the top you look at the map too very square but that's okay going inside though bam little chill spot oh i've got a ton of random stuff in here i'm not the greatest with uh inventory management but we got a skylight there too got a little bit of storage space a little desk here and a little sleeping spot uh i need to reset my spawn back at the village or the city so but that's all the builds we have so far. I've been trying to take this world relatively slow and enjoy the long game. So I hope you enjoyed all the little details we've built along the way. These first 500 days fit the fairy theme well since it's so early game and a lot of the buildings use simple materials like wood and wool. But with an update around the corner, I want to do a few things before I have to update. So we're going to head to different regions in the coming episodes and I hope to see you in the other regions of this world. I hope you enjoyed this world tour and lore, and let me know what you think in the comments. Bye-bye for now.